Coming up, don't dial and drive. Police crack down on motorists who use their mobiles. The record reading attempt turning bookworms into world beaters. And the brains behind the bikes. We meet the man in charge of Tour of Britain. ITV News Central at six. Coming up, police begin a crackdown on drivers who use their mobiles at the wheel. Details next. The latest national and international stories here in half an hour. That's after the news from where you are. Hello and welcome to ITV News Central. On the programme tonight, police launch a new crackdown on drivers who use their phones behind the wheel. In 2015, it will become the biggest killer on Britain's roads. So, so it's a massive problem. Calls from the charity Guide Dogs to ban parking on pavements. Why the future's looking brighter for Kenny Jacket and Wolverhampton Wanderers. And you've heard their stories all this week. Tonight, find out which of these four has won our Pride of Britain fundraiser award. Good evening. With the number of road deaths caused by drivers on mobile phones increasing, police are launching dedicated patrols to catch motorists who simply can't wait to make that call. They're asking drivers if they could justify that call or text message to the families of someone who died in a crash. A mother from Staffordshire whose daughter was killed by a driver who was on the phone has welcomed the crackdown. Gareth Owen reports. Laura Thomas was on her way to the Welsh coast when she broke down. She was in the wrong place at the wrong time. As she waited alongside the A5 in Shropshire, a lorry approached at speed. The driver was browsing the internet on his phone. The collision killed her. Half the time you're waiting for it not to have happened, that she's just gonna walk to the door and she's here. The other times that you feel she's just, it was just such a waste and she had done absolutely nothing wrong. That was last year, but since then the problem has got even worse. Today we were invited to join a patrol in an unmarked police car on the M6. Within minutes, the first mobile phone was spotted. Lorry driver to our right in this orange truck. He was on the phone as he went past him on the motorway. And how we deal with him depends on his, uh, on his driving record, really. Yeah, I want to speak to you about using your mobile phone on the motorway and coming down the slip road. The police officer takes the driver to the unmarked car and explains what will happen next. In a couple of weeks' time, you're going to be notified about what's going to happen to you about the offence, OK? I don't make the decision. Just two years ago, drivers using mobile phones caused 17 deaths. The increase since then has been astonishing. Next year, it will be the biggest killer on Britain's roads, something which Laura's mother says makes her feel sick. Now I can appreciate that it's these normal hard-working people that are out on the road every day. They've got to get from A to B. Your mind's thinking, I need to do this, this, this when I get home. And this is a time where I can sort out so many jobs and they don't see what, that driving is actually a job in itself. Back out on patrol, it's not long before we find another motorist on the phone and another hard luck story. It's a bad day today all round. I've just, uh, just heard a lot, well, finally I was losing my job and um, I've had a couple of calls about it on the way back from the office. This month, the police will launch new dedicated patrols to catch offenders, a crackdown which is being welcomed by Lisa and the people who are trying to educate offenders. It's not just a case of, oh, it's only a quick text. Oh, I only just need to see who it is. It's that bigger picture of what happens if you have an accident, what happens if you kill somebody. Imagine standing in court facing somebody's family, trying to justify it. Could any, anybody justify it to you if it was the person you loved that had died? The lorry driver who killed Laura got five years in prison. The motorists stopped today will have to wait to hear their punishment. Gareth Owen, ITV News. Ten members of the Taliban thought to be responsible for shooting women's education campaigner Malala Yousafzai have been arrested by the Pakistani army. 
Malala's father said the development is good news for them and the people of Pakistan. She survived the attack after being airlifted to Birmingham's QE hospital for treatment. She now goes to school in Birmingham and officially opened the city's new library last year. A couple from Wolverhampton have been charged with murdering their baby daughter in January this year. The 32 and 36-year-olds from Park Village are due in court in the morning. Their nine-month-old was taken to hospital in January. A post-mortem examination revealed the child had rickets and died of pneumonia as a result of severe malnourishment. Police have released CCTV of a man wanted on suspicion of stealing £200 at a swimming baths in Birmingham. He was caught rifling through a purse in the changing rooms of Stetchford swimming baths after someone had accidentally left it in a faulty locker. Police say this footage was taken last Thursday and they want anyone who knows the man to get in touch. Now, most of us will have experienced it at some point, a parked vehicle blocking the pavement we want to walk on. Or well, sometimes the only way past is to step out into the road. Well, that's dangerous for everyone, but even more so for those who are visually impaired or living with a disability. Now, a local MP is trying to get a bill through Parliament to ban parking on pavements once and for all. Callum Watkinson reports. Training playful pups into trusted companions for the visually impaired is a rigorous process and it needs to be. The average high street is an obstacle course for those relying on a guide dog's eyes. They say drivers who park on the pavement, as demonstrated here, are needlessly adding to the challenge. I come across a car or a van or quite often a really big lorry on the pavement. I can't go into the road and at that point I'm just stuck and that's really upsetting, really makes me quite angry at times because it's just somebody not thinking about the fact that that pavement is there for me to safely walk. Recent research for the charity Guide Dogs shows three quarters of us at some point have to walk in the road to get past a parked car. An MP now wants a new law introduced to make parking on the pavement illegal and says it's not just a problem for those who can't see. It's a real problem for elderly people, for disabled people, especially wheelchair users, for parents with young kids in buggies. It's a problem for local schools, it's a problem for the councils that have to repair the pavements and the grass verges after people have churned them up. So for all sorts of reasons it's an important issue and I really want to get the law clarified and sorted so that councils will actually enforce it. And currently it's up to local councils to prevent or allow parking on pavements as they see fit. Some say a blanket ban enshrined in law wouldn't be enforceable. At the moment the problem with most inner city areas is that there's too many cars and too few parking spaces and you can't magic that away by suddenly banning parking on pavements. For example, many councils actually encourage you to park on pavements. It's the best way to keep the road free. It allows access for emergency vehicles. Parking on London's pavements has been banned since 1974. This private member's bill is a step in the right direction for those who think the rest of the country should follow. Callum Watkinson, ITV News. So, should parking on the pavement be banned? We've been getting your views on our Facebook page today. Uh, Ellen Taylor from Stourbridge posted this picture and said, uh, I had to walk in the road with my baby in the pram. She said she tweeted the company, though, and they did apologise for parking there. Which is good, isn't Which it? Which is very good. Yeah. Well, Claire Aston from Albury said, my mum was in a wheelchair and it could be a nightmare trying to get round cars. But there are roads where the drivers don't really have much choice. Now, if I do park slightly on the pavement, I always make sure that there is plenty of room for anyone to get through. Uh, Joseph Nikilski from Atherston said, I do not agree with a blanket ban because in many areas it's the only place to put a car and where it doesn't block a wheelchair going by, I don't see a problem, he says. Donna Lander from Willenhall said, Outside a school is terrible, but there are usually no parking spaces, and it seems that unless you do park in this way, you do get serious damage to your car. Lots of your views. Thank you very much to everybody who took part. And you can continue that debate on our Facebook page. Now, you are uh, watching ITV News Central. Still to come on the programme, we crown the Pride of Britain fundraiser of the year for the West Midlands. Which of these four will it be? and it's been dry and warm in the West Midlands all week. Is it going to stay that way for the weekend? Find out in the full forecast later in the programme.